Hi, Jennifer Campbell here, your online systemic leadership mentor. In this video, I will cover step number two in the systemic change leadership journey. What you'll learn is how to identify the change or changes that your organization is about to experience and why that is incredibly important for successful and sustainable change without wasting a lot of time, money, and energy. Now, this step alone has allowed me to help leaders, project managers, and many others who deal with change in organizations. And I help them to prevent implementing a change based on methods that are not actually suitable for the change at hand and therefore not for the organization. Now, this step is crucial in all change situations, and I've applied it in global corporations as well as small startup type organizations. And so part of this method, what's also important to, to mention, includes the use of um, the Kinevin framework, the ADCAR model, uh, systemic approaches to change. And I learned all of that from Systemic Leadership Summit speakers such as Dave Snowden, Stuart Hill, Young Up Stum, and many others. And a big part of my experience in this step comes from the 25 years of change management that I've been doing in organizations. Now, before I go into the how of change identification, I want to share with you some of the main challenges that leaders have. Now, first of all, many leaders do not know the state of their organization and that it's really in when they are encountering change or want to implement change. Now, this may sound strange, but nowadays, the change after change that's happening does not allow leaders to have a rapid feedback system to help them to really see the state of their organization, of the organizational system, and what is required of the system to go through change processes that the leaders are really aiming for. Secondly, many changes are approached as a linear A to B type of um, solution to problems. Now, problems, you know, the A to B is like knowing the cause and effect combination. And once you do, you change the cause and you'll have a different effect. Now, unfortunately, because of the multitude of changes and the increasingly complex and chaotic situations, that this does not work. You cannot isolate the problem and fix it and then the run expect that the organization runs smoothly. So for many changes, cause and effect can be found easily and in some situations not at all. So and because of this misidentification of a change, the wrong change approach and methods are used and it leads to no sustainable result. The third challenge that leaders have is that they do not have the proper like overview or scale of types of changes. And I don't mean a typology like a merger and acquisition, things like that. I mean more in the sense of how do the patterns in your organization actually need to change because of all this. Now, for example, calling something a transformation when it actually is just a change or a transition really makes no sense. So even digital transformation usually just means a change of IT systems, but rarely a complete identity change for an organization which is much closer to a definition of what a transformation actually is. So this also impacts the way changes are defined and implemented. Now, I'm going to um, show you and talk to a number of important steps to a systemic approach that you can use to overcome these challenges. You'll be able to see and identify changes in terms of type, impact, system alignment with its purpose, and the ability of the system to handle the changes, whether these are planned or emerging ones or both. Now, these steps will save you a lot of time, money, and energy in your change leadership success and your business in general from the very moment that you start implementing them. 
Now, step number one is that you need to understand systemic change forces that um, are in and around you as a leader and as your organization. Um, and actually, there are three. There's the the termination that we all know, the strategizing that we all know as leaders. That's called the free will of leaders. So that's one dynamic. Then there is system dynamics. This has to do with that your organization has patterns it wants to run, but also there is um, potential that is knocking on the door, opportunities um, or movements that the system wants to make. And that is a second force that you really need to reckon with. Um, And then there's a third force. It's called evolutionary force, and that influences um, big at a big societal level, and it decides endings as well as beginnings. So this is very important that you know these three forces. So um, understand that the change that you want to implement is not just up to you. So, uh, but it's also about where the system wants to move and what's happening in the bigger context. Then the second part in this step, it's important to make a physical representation of the organizational system and the change to identify where the system wants to move and if this is aligned with the change you want to implement. And it's also possible to zoom out and see what the societal impacts are on the change. So I don't mean the market, I mean the bigger societal um, dynamics that are going on. So that's step number one, understand systemic forces of change. Then step number two is identify the change or changes in terms of the degree to which patterns need to change. And so there are two viewpoints that I would like to share with you in this step. And one is a change typification of the degree of impact on patterns. Um, And when we look at change, these are development, change or transition, reset and transformation. Now, when your organization is in development, this means that Um, it will look at its patterns and it may optimize them. So if we produce product X or service Y, then we're going to optimize our process in doing so. Now, a change or transition is about um, usually like diversifying. So the pattern doesn't change that much but we are adding a product or we're adding a service. And um, the pattern by which we run this, and I don't mean the process, like the production process, things like that, but the pattern that we use to set this up is very similar to what we have. So uh, many changes fall in this category. So change or transition. Then there's reset, and this has to do with um, Understanding that everyone in the organization will remain, but the way the organization identifies itself, what it does in the world is changing. And so the people stay the same, but, um, and there's a joint commitment, but what the organization is resetting to is different. Now, this may sound a bit abstract, but um, there are ample examples examples of a reset where, um, yeah, just an organization is um, noticing that the way they're doing business now is ending and that they need to find a different way um, to be meaningful in the context that they're in. Now, transformation means a total identity change of the organization. So this is about um, not knowing where you'll end up. 
And this word gets used and overused and abused, but that's what transformation actually is, a totally total identity change where the name is not the same, the DNA is not the same, the people are not the same, um, the core product or service is not the same, everything changes. So this is um, a typification of the degree of impact on patterns of change. Then there is also the Kinevin framework, a sense-making framework that helps you to identify where your organization is, what type of change situation is at hand, and also which tools to use. Now, it's a bit far-fetched to do a full explanation of the framework, but what I can say is that the ingredients in there are um, from order to complicated to complex chaos, and then there's also a a place in the middle called disorder. Now disorder basically means that you don't know where you are and that you don't know what type of changes are happening. And this is a space where you want to get out of as soon as you can. The order space is a simple space, is the A to B type of uh, problems and solutions, the linear ones. The complicated are also um, almost linear, but because there's a multitude of causes and effects, it's more difficult. So we need to have experts to detangle these. When things become more complex, then there are uh, multitudes of clouds of causes and effects, and they cannot be analyzed. Um, this is where you look for the cause and effect by means of sense making and stories. And then there is chaos. And this is um, the most overly complex of the three and requires experience and action. I hardly find an organization, I hardly find an organization where there's um, chaos, where they um, have the correct approach. Usually it's approach from the order or complicated category. Now, um, I'm not doing it justice in this short fraction, but it's really important that these two approaches in identifying the change in terms of patterns and in terms of uh, change type so that you know that the approaches are different that you further investigate these. But that was step number two. And step number three is that you then can do the more typical approaches to change identification. By that I mean um, um, looking for the experience that your organization has with change, how it deals with change. Because that says a lot about the change DNA that your organization has um, and also um, what worked well and what did not work well. Um, and that's very important. Then there are also the aspects of the change. So uh, those are more the typical things in terms of is it a large change or a small change? Um, is it um, enterprise-wide or is it within a few departments or in just one team? Um, and then the risk assessment of combining the two. How change-ready are we and how much change uh, support do we actually need when we look at our experience and how complex the change is or how intense the change is. And then there are the other steps also like doing an analysis of uh, how the system will be impacted. You can also do this a systemic way uh, by using um, uh, mapping or constellation work. And uh, you can also uh, answer the question, how will stakeholders be impacted? So three steps to really um, underline the change identification. Now, 
what's important to know with all these steps that I'm um, explaining to you in this video series is that they are all uh, a fraction of a very effective systemic change leadership strategy. And the systemic change leadership journey is the framework that we use to help leaders like you to increase their leadership success, change leadership success um, in terms of ROI within a, only a few months. And so it helps you to have a massive impact and take your organization to a much more sustainable place. Um, if you want to get crystal clear on the one thing that you should be doing right now to identify uh, the change in the systemic way, or if you want to learn about the systemic change leadership journey as a whole, then you can book a complimentary call with me. And you can do so by clicking the link below. Now, during this call, we'll take a look at your organization, the change at hand, and the different situations that you are dealing with. And then we'll go through this step as well as zoom out and go through the full systemic change leadership journey framework. And at the end of the call, you will have uh, an idea of the most important step or strategy that you need to work with at this time in your organization. For now, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.